You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away, leave this area because Herod wants to kill you. He replied, and Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I accomplish my purpose. Yes, I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How many times I yearned to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house will be abandoned. But I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here in Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives, we have a shrine. Uh, Dominus Flavit, where the Lord cried over Jerusalem. And this text is also uh, engraved on one of the walls of this chapel, which looks out over the old city and has a, an extraordinary panoramic view. Uh, <clears throat> so there we remember this mystery because we also can see the site of the Via Dolorosa and the Holy Sepulchre from there where Jesus then underwent the sufferings that he foresaw. And here we're contemplating his heart, which is amazingly strong in perseverance, very decided. And he is doing this for us and for our salvation, which reveals extraordinary love, a total commitment. We see this uh, coming to an extreme moment then later on in Gethsemane, in this wrestling for the grace with his father to hold his human nature against the challenge of the sufferings. It's good that some Pharisees came to advise him that it was dangerous, not really that Jesus needed that information, but at least it showed concern on their behalf uh, for his good to avoid that uh, horrible fate. And so we Think of many people today in persecution and suffering who need friends to help them. And we know of priests and bishops and lay people, catechists, teachers, sisters who were killed this year also, recently also in some countries. People who are out to get them. Herod wants to kill you. This is one facet of Christianity that it doesn't receive welcome always. It stands for a different kingdom that's not of this world, that's in this world, but not of this world. And we have the same kind of teaching in the letter to the Ephesians. It's a very strong letter uh, that also helps us to understand where where we're positioned. You know, if you're stuck fixing a car, you've got a flat tire, it's great if somebody comes to help you. We look for help. We need to associate with others to help. But the association that Paul advocates here is to be associated with God against the forces, the spiritual forces of evil. The difficulties we have here in this world, even the persecutions, are not just between political forces, ideologies that oppose, but actually the evil spirits are involved. And these words are exactly used in the reading with the evil spirits in the heavens. Why does it say in the heavens? Well, they're invisible. The imagination, the worldview of how to understand and place these evil spirits. But they're working. And the intense evil that reaches such extraordinary levels in our history that we sometimes read about and, and hear about and And it's not just in the bygone past, but also today. Um, 
I read in one small little country today that there are 10,000 abortions a year. And this country was a very Catholic country. It was a small population, hardly five million. And just thinking of the hurt that all these mothers endure in that separation and that memory. I remember all those lives taken of those defenseless creatures. Like what could bring our world to that volume of evil that happens in our world? What could bring our world to the volume of evil that's happening with human trafficking? The volume of evil that happens in euthanasia. It has a very nice name, a good death, euthanasia. It's a, a good death. Well, it's actually not good to take the life of a human being. It's one of the primary commandments. And so we have these forces of evil that blind people, that confuse people. So blind that we even call certain things that are totally evil human rights. And our society is so organized. And Paul says, stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness, readiness for the gospel of peace. Hold faith as a shield to protect us. You know, if you have a good treasure, some wonderful jewelry or a very beautiful cake, you take care how you carry it. <laughs> you don't want to, to fall apart. Um, the treasure of, of human life, obviously, the greatest treasure on the earth and the cosmos. Uh, and to protect it, to protect against evil. We can't go around carefree. We would protect our treasures. But the greatest treasure each of us has is our own soul. And we have temptations. And there are some systematic ways of temptations assaulting us continually in the entertainment industry. And so many possibilities on the internet. And so Paul's uh, call to people in the first century that had not yet been evangelized, pagan cultures that had lived in a debauchery in different ways, we have a very powerful experience here of Paul's passion, his strength to rise up, to put on this breastplate, to be ready for the combat. And he himself is in prison at this time. He must have also been assaulted by uh, depression, maybe, by sadness, by uh, revenge. What happens when those type of temptations come upon us? They flow over us. We need great defenses. Prayer, fasting, humility, perseverance, virtues going in the narrow gate that we had the other day. So here we have both Paul and Jesus in very, very strong positions. And the psalm confirms that, blessed be the Lord, my rock. We need that alliance with God, the alliance with the power of God who holds us up and we would never have a temptation beyond our strength. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.